I just want to talk to you just very quickly, very briefly about the uh, gents saw, uh, especially these more finely backed saws, the narrow backs, the brass backs, and um, talk to you about some issues with, with this type of saw that you can reconcile and um, work with. Sometimes you buy a saw where the spline itself is bent, kinked or whatever, and you have to sharpen it because the blade won't be straight. But sometimes you'll get a saw like this one here. This is a good saw. I've had this one for about 12 years, um, and it's a good saw. This is, these are three saws that we bought recently, and we found that all of the backs on them were slightly, well, not slightly, some of them were very bent. Let's take a look at this one here, just so I can show you what I mean. This saw came from the manufacturer with a bend in it. Can you see that? I go there. Can you see how much the bend is in the back of that saw? A rock with the wood. So if I turn the saw over and you look down the length of the saw there, you can see there's a bend all the way along the length. So that means the back of the saw is bent, therefore the plate is bent. But I want to show you something here. This saw I worked on at one point and the blade is straight. Can you see, agree with me, that, that's, that the blade is, is straight along its length? So what happens, let me show you something about this type of saw. This brass is not um, milled from a solid brass piece. It's a folded piece of brass that was an inch wide. It was folded over to form a continuous U-shape in the brass at the end. So watch what happens when I take this hammer and tap the back of this saw. Watch here now. So that you agree that this is, let me just give you one last look there. You agree that this is straight along its length, right along here, you should be looking. It's straight along there. Watch what happens when I hit this here. Now I think you'll see that it has a slight bend in it. It has a bend in the length going down the length. I'm going to hit it again. And this time, I think you'll see a much bigger bend. You can see it in the face of the plate here. So how do you get that kink out? It's not really a kink, it's just a bend. This is how you would normally do it. You would take the saw, line it up with a, something flat like the bench top, double-handed here like this and just lift it up and whack it down as, and try to get the whole of the length of the, the spline to hit the bench all at once like this, like that. Now when you look down, it should be straight. So it's fairly straight now, I can go again, do the same again. So this is shocking the steel into the pinched uh, brass back, like that. And now I'm dead straight. Um, we can use it. So we go to these other saws now. I've got, this one is straight from the manufacturer, this saw. This is the same saw, it's an identical saw. And actually this one has a bend in it, and then so too does this one. This one has a very long bend in it, and I think I showed you a second ago. That, can you see the bend along that white line? So we've got to correct that. If I bang on the bench with this one, let's see if this will correct it. Like that, no, no difference. It didn't make hardly any difference, or it made no difference as far as I could see along the edge of the saw. So that does mean that the back is bent. All right, so what I've got to do is straighten it. And how we straighten this is, if you've got a piece of leather or something that you can put in the vise just to allow it to move, what I'm gonna do is pinch it up tight and then back it off. And now I'm gonna pull this, so the bend in this is this way here. So I'm going to pull this in the opposite direction. So I'm going to pull the edge of the um, spline against the edge of the vise in a continuous pull, pressing firmly against the side of the vise to bend the whole length of the blade if it's a continuous curve, which is as it was. Can you see how that's bending there? flexing really to the pressure all the way into the end. Now look what we've got there. 
Can you see? That took out most of that bend. I don't know if I've got all of it yet. No, it, it isn't. It still has a slight... Actually, I've, over, I've overcompensated there. I'm going to go back in and just pull it more gently this time in the opposite direction, just to correct it. Like that. Now the spline is dead straight. I've got curved down the saw, so I'm going to tap here and tap at different parts just to see that straightens and it does, it does definitely straighten it. So one quick whack and we are straight. So we've got, we've got a straight saw now and we can work with this saw. There, there should be no problems with it at all now we've straightened it. So it'll stay like that. Sometimes you just Something presses on here, it pinches in the steel, it pulls it out. Just a whack on the back, we'll straighten the saw. And now we're ready to work on the saw or work with the saw. If it's sharp, we don't need to do anything if it's not sharp. Let's take a quick look at that. Here's a saw that I have. I want you to count with me. So this is a saw that came straight from the manufacturer. Um, it's not straight. So watch this now. One, two, three, four. Twenty. So that took twenty strokes to get the full width of the saw. Let's try it on this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 11 strokes, it took 11 strokes. What was the difference? The same size teeth. It has the same size teeth. I didn't alter the pitch on the teeth. I kept the teeth exactly the same, but I did file each tooth. And I sharpened each tooth with one half length stroke and that's what improved it. So it was just simply passing the saw file through each tooth to improve the quality of the cut. Dead simple. Two, um, Remedial steps there to correct a flaw in manufacture. It shouldn't happen, but it does.